Hi, I'm Brian with HTD. And I'm Chris. And we're going to talk a little bit about the differences between a wired whole home audio system and a wireless whole home audio system. Um, th because there seems to be a lot of confusion on that. Really, the basic difference is that in a wired system, what we're talking about is wiring up the speakers in the room back to a centralized amplifier versus a wireless whole home audio system where the amplifier is not centralized but is located typically with the speaker, sometimes even built into the speaker itself in the zone, in all the different zones all throughout the, different the home. Zones. The one we're pointing at here is a Sono system. Um, it's uh, probably the most popular, I'd say definitely the most definitely. popular. I mean, they were, and rightfully so, they were uh, the first to market and it works very well, it hooks up nicely. You don't have uh, the dropouts or anything like that. It's a good, good system. Obviously a wired system, you don't have to worry about any of that uh, as well. The downside to a wired system is that you do have to run speaker wire from that central location to every location in your home where you want to put a speaker. Now the upside to that is it allows you to use a speaker such as an in-ceiling speaker that can virtually disappear into your ceiling. This is our HDR80. It's one of our most popular uh, speakers for good reason. It sounds really, really nice. Like I said, it disappears into your ceiling. So the key difference in using an in-ceiling speaker versus a speaker that's set up, uh, you know, just on a in bookshelf yeah, somewhere on the room. Uh, there, there's, there's actually se several key, key benefits. One, obviously, as we just mentioned, the aesthetics of it, it disappears, you don't see it. Uh, the second is the uh, coverage of the room. When you go with two, two of these speakers in the ceiling, the coverage in that room is definitely more uniform than putting one of these on a bookshelf or even two of these spread out on a bookshelf. Right, which you would need to if you want to get stereo imaging in a room with the Sonos type setup. Right. But like you said, the coverage, you're going to get a much more even distribution of sound when you have the ceiling speakers spread out equally throughout the room. Whereas with the Sonos style, something like this, or with any of the other wireless platforms like this, you'd have to have two speakers spread out, like Brian said, sitting on a bookshelf somewhere or on a dresser or something where typically you're going to be able to see them and you've got sound firing from one area of the room out towards you, meaning it's only going to sound good if you're sitting across the room from these speakers. With a ceiling application, you don't have to worry about that. Right. It's, it's, uh, we often liken it to when you walk into a really nice restaurant or a nice hotel and you just hear this, the sound all around you, that music all around you, and you don't really know where it's coming from. That is a great effect of having the speakers in the ceiling as opposed to on a bookshelf somewhere because you know higher frequencies are directional so if you walk into a room and there's music playing typically you can just point over and say oh it's coming from right there and you know this is sort of like a uh, you know the old days where you had a jam box in every room uh, for those of you who remember those days <laughs> and you can definitely walk in and tell that's where the sounds coming from I'm listening to sound out of that speaker whereas when it's coming from the ceiling it tends to just fill the room and be all around you um, so that's, that's one of the benefits. Another benefit is obviously when you're talking about something that you can hide away, you can make the speaker with a much larger driver. So this uses an 8-inch uh, aluminum cone driver, and, whereas this uses a couple of either 3 or 3.5-inch three uh, drivers, and you just can't get the kind of bass out of this. And it's nice. It sounds good for its size, but it's not going to compare to a really nice in-ceiling speaker where you take right. advantage of that large cavity in your ceiling as the speaker cabinet. So you're going to get better coverage. Uh, you can't really tell where it's, where it's coming from, which is a much better feel for whole home audio. It's going to sound better. And of course, you know, aesthetically, we think it, it looks, looks better, better because you don't, you don't see it. You don't notice it. So in short, when you're going with a wired system, uh, if you're going to put in ceiling speakers in your home, if you're in new construction or uh, if you're doing some remodeling, or you have a single story home and you can get into the attic where you can run that speaker cable, you're going to be much better off with a wired system. Uh, but if you can't, definitely consider a wireless home, home audio system. Yeah, this is a great solution if you can't run cable. But if you can run cable, I agree. And right. you also get more functionality if you have a wired system as well. If you have the ability to run, if, like you said, new construction or single story house, mm -hmm. if you have the ability to run Cat5 as well, then that opens you up to have the flexibility of using a keypad. Yeah, that's that's right. You can control the system. Uh, and, you know, one thing to, to, to back up just a little bit, in both cases, you can control your system from a smartphone or an iPad. Um, and with this case, you get the additional feature of being able to control the system from an in-wall 
uh, keypad. A lot of our customers are opting not to put in a full set of keypads. They might put you know one in the kitchen and one in another prominent area of the home, maybe the master bedroom, and leaving the other zones just to be controlled by the phone. That's fine. Um, if you want to put a keypad in every room for convenience, you certainly can. That allows anybody to use the system. That's right. They don't have to have their phone. They don't have to be connected up. They don't have to be taught. You can just walk over, choose the source, change the volume, turn it off. You know, very simple from a keypad. Um, that kind of functionality we sometimes liken to the, uh, uh, the way lighting control is done these days. You can certainly control all of your lighting from a phone, from a tablet. Right. But the convenience of being able to walk out of the room and flip the switch off um, you know, you don't want to abandon that entirely if you can run the, uh, the Cat5 cable. And that's what this, this requires. This requires a Cat5 cable run from the keypad back to the same central location where you have your other uh, amplifiers. But again, it's not a mandatory thing. We're also yes, seeing, yeah, yeah yep. sorry, I, we also see a lot of uh, our customers who previously, you know, 10 years ago set up a single zone system which basically means the entire home is forced to listen to the same thing, but they're probably controlling the volume independently with a rotary volume control uh, in that zone, but they're having to listen to the same source. They can very easily switch over to a true multi-zone right. system, multi-source system, uh, just by adding a controller and controlling it from their phone. And you still have the volume control in the room, so if, they, if you want to use that, kind of the convenience factor, like Brian said, if you're walking out of a room, you want to turn the audio off, you can still use the old volume control, but you have the ability to control each zone independently through the app, play different audio sources in each room, and you also have volume control there. So, right. you know, it, it, it opens you up to where you have additional flexibility if you have the ability to wire, at least get speaker wire centrally located. And right. then to your point on the phone, as far as controlling through the phone, I think that's another area where people get confused is um, they think wireless system, well, they just want to send all of the music, do everything wirelessly, and so you look at something like the Sonos or the Denon Heos, and there's several others out there. Mm -hmm. um, you do, you, you pull up the app on the phone and you can control it and you can send audio to um, that system from your phone. You don't lose that functionality with a wired system. You can always add a wireless streamer such as an Apple Airport Express or a Sonos Connect just happens to be one of the sources we do recommend uh, to customers. We say, go ahead and plug that in. You can, you, you can have device. that same flexibility that you get with the Sonos app and be able to stream the music wirelessly from a phone or a tablet into your system, you can do that with a Sonos Connect. The difference with this is there's no amplifier built in, there's no speakers. Right. You're relying the, on this box for kind of the brains of what Sonos does, but then you're utilizing our system for kind of the power so you get that better quality sound and you know the more even distribution of sound with the ceiling speakers and all that stuff. Yeah, that's right. And just, just to reiterate, there are a lot of people who like the Sonos interface. Uh, we like it too. It's, it's a great way to uh, grab the music that you have stored in your home, stream many of the different apps that are available out there, but you don't have to set up uh, multiple speakers like this and every, which are expensive. That's one thing we even talked about is the cost right. difference. Obviously with the wired system, you're gonna save a lot of money in addition to uh, the additional features you get. But if you like the Sonos interface, you can get a Sonos Connect, one of them, not one for every zone, just one of them, and plug it into your whole house audio system and it can be made available to every zone in the home. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about the differences. Uh, one of the things that we did not point out that is worth mentioning is that we've talked primarily about getting your music distributed throughout your home. Uh, but you also often will listen to the audio coming out of your televisions or your home theater receivers, your, your PlayStation, Xbox, that sort of thing. And in a wired system, you can connect those audio streams directly into uh, a wired system and, and the audio and the video will be in sync. With a wireless system, because you're sending your audio wirelessly around the home and then your TV has some of its own processing in it, it's very difficult to get those two to sync up. So if you're planning on using your whole house audio system for more than just music, uh, which we make very easy to do, especially with the link system, um, then you, know, you really should consider a wired system versus wireless. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that's one of those things where there's no doubt that whenever you're watching television and you mentioned games isn't like game consoles, but what I do more often than not is football games, baseball games, things mm. like that. I may have that on on a television, but then I'll want to hear that in other rooms as well, or especially like back patios one where I'll often do that. And, That's a good point. And it is, it is annoying if you've got rooms that are open to one another, and it's obvious that the audio is not in sync with the video. So that, to me, that is a good key point to hit on as far as wired versus wireless. Yeah. 
Very good. Well, in another video, we're going to talk about uh, the different music sources, the way to stream music into your system. Uh, but for now, that's it on Wired versus Wireless. We thank you for watching. Thanks.